What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about the holidays. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. One of the things that I have found on social media that I think bothers me is the polarization of how you should approach the holidays nutritionally. On one end, you have people saying, you know, hardcore bro, sacrifice, bring your Tupperware container. And on the other hand, you have people going, you know, one meal is not going to hurt you. You should enjoy it. Have whatever you want. And so for me, these are all feelings-based things. And I don't really mess with feelings. Let's look at the facts. So let's look at, are the holidays something we actually need to be concerned about when it comes to our goals? If you look at the research on obesity, adults typically gain like around a half to one kilo per year of adulthood. A lot of people have said things like, well, you know, obesity is just a disease of 30 extra calories per day. If we could just cut 30 calories out of people's diets per day, we could end the obesity crisis. I promise you, if you cut 30 calories out of your diet, absolutely nothing will happen. One of the reasons for this is people don't gain weight linearly throughout the year. That's not how it happens. In fact, the research studies on holiday eating showed that anywhere from 50 to 90% of the weight you gain are from the six weeks at the end of November until the beginning of January. That is the holidays. And what's more is on average, people who add that weight don't take it off during the rest of the year. And so if you look at the average holiday weight gain, it tracks very closely with overall weight gain, which means that quite frankly, the holidays are a significant contributor to the obesity crisis. And there's a lot of factors that play into this. The first is the food. Typically, you're eating more comfort food because it's the colder months, at least in the USA. You have like your main meals, you know, turkey, not real bad, ham, not real bad. But then you have things like mashed potatoes on their own, not bad, but they're usually lathered up with butter. You've got a lot of sugary foods. You've got a lot of very fatty foods, just very calorically dense. And then let's not talk about the desserts. Actually, let's talk about them. Pecan pie. Mm, mm, mm. Love me some pecan pie, but a slice of pecan pie is like 75 grams of carbs and 25 grams of fat. It is dense, but oh, it's so good. Then there's also the social aspect of things. Research studies show that people who eat alone tend to eat less than when they're with a partner. And actually, as the group expands, people actually tend to eat more the bigger the group they're in. Part of that is just behavior mirroring and festivities, as we eat, we drink, we just tend to do more of the things that other people are doing. It's not even necessarily a conscious thing. And speaking of drinking, alcohol tends to be a significant contributor to calories over the holidays, more so than at other times of the year. And again, even if you're just doing straight liquor, alcohol itself has seven calories per gram. So you could just do straight shots. You know, I don't know anybody wants to like sip a shot at the holiday meal. If you did three shots, even a very, very low calorie, relatively alcohol, that's still 200 calories. So that stuff adds up very, very quickly and it's not satiating. And that's the other part of this is these foods that are being cooked for Thanksgiving, Christmas, the holidays tend to be very low fiber, high fat, high sugar, very easy to overconsume. And then we get to the social aspect of pressure or people asking you, did you not like the food? Why aren't you eating more? Have you gotten enough? There's almost like this unspoken pressure for us to eat more at holidays because it makes other people feel better about eating more. So what do we do about this? Well, I don't think taking your food in a Tupperware container is necessarily the answer. Now, if you're one of the few people out there who are dieting for like a physique competition, I mean, that may just be something you have to do. Like that's just part of the sacrifice you're making, or you're just not going to these parties, which I don't recommend isolating yourself from friends and family. If you have been stupid enough to decide to diet over the holidays, I'm just kidding. Some shows are early, like if you're doing the Arnold, for example, you're a pro bodybuilder or bikini competitor, or whatever. If you're doing the Arnold in March, you're probably dieting through the holidays. So you're just, you're making that sacrifice. If we go next notch down, there's like bringing your food scale to holiday meals, this would not be for necessarily competitors, or maybe it is for competitors. If they want to enjoy a little bit, but still know what they're getting in, they could do that. Next step down is you are going to meals, not taking the scale, 
not weighing anything, but just being mindful, listening to your satiety cues. When you feel physically full, you stop eating, um, you get a sampling of what you want, and you don't gorge yourself. That is the approach that I tend to take. So when I go to a holiday meal, usually what I'll do is I'll restrict my calories the rest of the day. So I'll kind of do like time-restricted eating. I'll have some protein sprinkled in throughout the day, but then I'll save most of my carbohydrates and fats for that meal so that I've got more flexibility for that meal. Then what I'll tend to do is I'll go get a good-sized helping of protein, hopefully lean proteins like turkey or ham, then I'll get a sampling of the other dishes that I want. Uh, I'll eat until I feel physically full and I might have a small dessert. And for me, I feel like I'm partaking, I feel like I'm having a good time, I don't feel deprived, and I don't have that uncomfortable feeling of just feeling like I ate myself into a stupor. And I've never quite understood that of people who just feel like they need to eat until they're about to burst in order to feel like they had a good time. Like, if that's you, I mean, cool, but I personally don't get it. And then what I'll do is I'll take an estimate of what I ate and I'll put it in my tracker and I'll just take my best guess and then move on with my life. I don't really think about it that much. Next level down is just kind of like your intuitive eating style, which is you're not tracking, you're just kind of, you know, listening to your satiety cues and having some of the foods you like and then stopping when you're full. Next level down is kind of into the space of I'm just going to eat whatever I want. And then like at the, like the next level down is I'm gonna stuff myself because for whatever reason, this feels like a good idea. Again, I think for most people falling somewhere in those, those like mindful eating or like estimating and putting it in your tracker later, I, I think that those are both reasonable ways to go about it for most folks. Now, why am I not a big fan of the, the you know, eat whatever you want, it's only one meal? Well, if it was just one meal, you're, maybe you're right. Uh, but holidays aren't just one meal. There's, you know, Halloween candy. There's Thanksgiving dinner. Sometimes there's multiple Thanksgiving dinners. Some people have like a Friendsgiving and a Thanksgiving, or they have multiple stops at Thanksgiving where they feel like they got to eat each one. Then you have your holiday parties. Then you have the week of Christmas. You have Christmas Eve. You have Christmas Day. You have New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. And again, a lot of this is multiple meals on each day. So it's not really just one meal. And I, so I really get like kind of annoyed when I, I know well-meaning fitness influencers who are like, it's just one meal, enjoy yourself. Yeah, it is one meal, but it turns into multiple meals. It, it's not quite that simple. So I do think some form of being mindful and also just being honest with yourself. About like, what are my goals during this holiday season? First off, I don't recommend dieting for fat loss during the holidays. It tends to ruin holidays and ruin fat loss. What I recommend is going through a period of maintenance. And because if you maintain your body weight, like you're ahead of the game for most people, because most people gain like a kilo or two during this time. So be honest with yourself about your goals. If your goal is primarily, like I'm really focused on my um, body composition, I don't want to gain excess fat, well then you're going to have to be a little bit more restrictive with the stuff you do. If your goal is, you know what, I just want to enjoy myself, I don't really care if I gain some body fat, okay, well then you can be less restrictive. And there's a continuum there that you need to figure out where you want to fall upon. But for the most part, maintenance is a reasonable goal for a lot of people. And the one other thing that happens, and we see this time and time again at Team BioLane, is our signups obviously ramp up at the beginning of the year. And then they're usually pretty steady. And then like, also like summer, early summer, they ramp up again. But every year, October and November are our slowest months. People fall off, they don't resign, and we get less new signups. Why? Because people are going into the holidays and like, well, why would I get a coach during the holidays when I know I'm gonna have more trouble being adherent? But that doesn't make any sense. That is exactly when coaching can help you the most because you have somebody who can help guide you through this process, who can give you tools to manage this stuff. And again, if you come out at maintenance, you're ahead of the game. And a good coach can give you the tools to manage this stuff and walk you through this process and make it far less anxiety provoking. So in that vein, Team BioLane, here comes the shill, uh, is running an eight week special where usually you have to sign up for like a minimum of 12 weeks. We're letting you sign up for eight weeks during the holidays with a focus on getting you through the holidays, maintaining and hitting your goals nutritionally 
so that when you start the new year, you're not feeling like you're behind the eight ball, you feel in control, but you're actually able to enjoy the holidays. Again, people look at this stuff as like, well, I'm not gonna be able to lose fat, so what's the point? No, but if you maintain, or even maybe get a little bit of fat loss somehow or another, you're gonna be further ahead of people who put on a kilo or two during the holidays, who now have gotta like initially take it back off and then go wherever they wanna go after that. So again, it's one of these things I think people don't think about that much, but for me, if you're having a coach, the point of a coach is to come in and help you during the most difficult times for whatever your sport or whatever you're trying to get better at is, that's your biggest return on investment, not when everything's perfectly set up the way you want. I mean, if your life is set up perfectly for you to nail this fat loss journey, then you don't really need a coach that much. This is where coaching actually counts. So if you guys are interested in that, you can click the link to Team BioLane Coaching in the description. Check it out. Our coaches are top-notch, and I know they can help you get to your goal. And I'll catch you guys next week.